Good evening. Sadly, we are leaving Sydney today to head on to our next Australian destination. We have decided that the most cost-effective and time-efficient way to do that is by taking the Greyhound bus. So we are headed to the Greyhound station now. So we're on the bus now and our total journey time to get us up to our end destination is going to be about two days. Yep, two overnights. We haven't done two overnights since we went from Croatia to Turkey by bus and that was not the most pleasant experience. But yet we signed up to do two overnights on the bus yet again. We made it through our first night on a coach. It was pretty comfortable in the beginning. There really wasn't that many people when the bus picked us up in Sydney. But then more and more people started coming on. So sleep was interrupted, but we were still able to get a few winks. And now we head on to Brisbane, where we're going to be changing buses to then head on to our destination. But first, coffee. second bus journey which is going north from Brisbane. Now we thought you might be wondering how we are doing this busing around. It's all going to be on Greyhound Australia and they offer what they call a women pass and there are several different types of women passes. The first two things that it's broken down to is a national pass and an eastern pass. The national pass allows you to go on all of the routes that they service whereas the Eastern Pass only allows you to go on Eastern routes that they serve you. Under each of those categories, they offer different lengths of women pass. We did the National Pass, and we have done the 15-day one, which is the shortest one you can do, but they also offer 30, 60, 90, and 120 days. As far as the Eastern Pass goes, the shortest one is seven days, and then I believe they offer 15 and 30 days for sure. I don't know if they offer longer than that. And once you have one of these passes, you can do unlimited travel for that number of days based on the routes that you decided to go for. Obviously, the fewer days, the cheaper the pass is, and the more days, the more expensive it is. And then once you've actually bought the pass, then building out your itinerary is pretty straightforward. Once you've bought your pass, then you go to manage it, and then that's the point where you then have options to onto your itinerary while you're in Australia. And so with that, then you just search your route, you click the one that's for you, you make sure that you have that to your ticket, the ticket will then be updated, you will be assigned a seat once that's perfectly confirmed, and essentially everything is then locked in for you with at no extra cost beyond the ticket that you've already paid for. The amazing thing is that that then goes to a centralized system for the whole of Greyhound Australia, to the point where we've been on two buses already. We haven't even needed to show our ticket because they've already known that there's two people that wanted to go to this particular destination and they knew our names and they had it just all on this iPad. So obviously do keep your ticket on you with the full itinerary just so you can just be 100% sure as to what seat you're meant to be in. But fundamentally it did very well when we Bye. We have to get back on the bus now. We've had a 20 minute dinner stop. We're not quite ready for dinner, but we're ready for our second coffees of the day at like 5.30 p.m. We've also got ourselves a little bit more water and some bananas just to tide us over with the food we already have on the bus. We've got another overnighter, as we've alluded to earlier on, but with this one, hopefully by the time we wake up, we'll be well on our way to our final destination. 
I said 5.30. It's actually closer to 6.30 and we're not doing a guest tour. Oh, the time change. By the way, the time zones here in Australia don't make sense. Do not make sense because they're not done like longitudinally. Or it's not like applied evenly longitudinally. Yeah. And like in other places. Yeah. Because some states choose to have daylight savings time, other ones don't, and that means that some are like half an hour behind others, others are like an hour behind others, and so on and so on. It just ends up being a very confusing system. For foreigners, it's so normal for them. So who are we to judge? But anyway, we have to get back on the bus. It's 5.30 now, and our bus doesn't arrive until 9.50 in the morning, so we have a journey ahead of us. After 36 hours and two nights on a bus, we have made it to Airlie Beach. All things considered, I think we actually slept relatively well last night, but that may just be due to the cumulative fatigue from not actually having slept much the previous night. Either way, we'll take it as a win. And now we just have to wait four hours until we can check into our Airbnb. Beach. You're probably wondering why we're here. Well, Airly Beach is part of a region known as the Whitsundays, which have a famous and gorgeous set of islands. So that is why we're here today. And we're just walking to the meetup point where our tour operator is going to pick us up. Let's go. So we are now all checked in. We got these boarding passes which tell us exactly what boat that we're going to be going on today and apparently that also designates the exact route we're going to be taking. And then on top of that we have these what they refer to as stinger suits. Apparently it is stinger season here in this part of Australia which means that there's a lot of very nasty stinging jellyfish. So in order to protect ourselves then we need to wear these suits and it's very heavily advised to the point where it's practically mandatory. Thankfully though, suit hire is $8 and they make sure it's 100% your size before they give you anything. After a super easy 10 minute bushwalk, we have arrived at the summit of what is called Hill Inlet and you guys have to check out these views. We've now made it to Whitehaven Beach, which is one of the most famous beaches in the entire Whitsundays, and it happens to be on Whitsunday Island, which is the largest of the 74 islands that make up this area. silicon 
icon in it and it keeps it cool.
Actually, our tour is over, so we've just been dropped off and we're walking back to our Airbnb. But we want to give a huge shout out to Ocean Rafting, who put on a fantastic tour. I think we went on their Northern Explorer tour and alongside being able to see some of the most stunning scenery I think we've ever seen, then they also included a bunch, including pickup and drop off snorkel gear including flippers, water, sunscreen and even a snack when you come towards the end of your excursion. Just amazing stuff. However, if you're wanting alcoholic or non-alcoholic beverages and lunch, they only provide that at an additional cost. But all in all though, the experience with the staff was fantastic. They were absolutely brilliant. Took great care of you, were absolutely hilarious as well. Even did some what would you even call it? Aquabatics, I suppose? That's a great term. Like yeah. donuts, uh, wake surfing with the boats. Yep. And also the playlist that they kept on running on the boat was completely on point. Overall, it was just such a great experience because you felt like you were being properly taken care of from start to finish. I don't think we could have asked for a better experience. What did you think of it? I thought that what we saw the natural beauty is astounding and it kind of reminds me of Canada a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like it could be kind of like Vancouver, Vancouver Island area or in Ontario, there's a place called Muskoka or Gananoque because it's just like this big collection of islands that are covered in greenery. But to me, one of the big differences is that the water here is this light turquoise color, whereas in Canada, because it's lake water, it's a darker blue. And also the benefit to being here is that you have access to it all year round because of the temperature. Whereas in Canada, in the winter, not as fun. And then the other thing that really stood out to me was just the size of the coral that we saw today. It was huge. We've done a bunch of snorkeling in other countries. And yes, the coral has been colorful and beautiful, but it's just been smaller. These ones were ginormous. How about you? It's interesting because in amongst the things that we're planning on doing while we're in Australia, the Whit Sundays was one that kind of snuck into the itinerary a little bit. It was kind of one that as we were planning, we were thinking, yeah, we probably should do that based on what people are telling us, but we don't know a massive amount about it. But it just completely exceeded my expectations. Every single stop that we went on was gorgeous. When we went on to Whitsunday Island, it was amazing. The viewpoints absolutely took my breath away. I don't think I could say much more than, oh my God, every five seconds. And then on top of that, when we went on to Whitehaven, then it was just a lovely place to be as well. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get footage of it, but there were even a bunch of fish and stingrays and there were a couple of lemon sharks in the water as well just off the beach don't worry lemon sharks are not dangerous then when we got to the snorkel spots then it gave us a real sense of what the marine life in australia is all about and obviously this place is very famous for it so to get such a great introduction to australia's nature after having had such a great introduction to australia's cities it's just been wonderful 100 percent worth the trip up here and i would say worth the money but we didn't technically pay for it it was a christmas present from my mom and dad so thank you very much mom and dad thank you so much sue and david we really really enjoyed ourselves and of course it wouldn't have been possible without you guys that was a truly spectacular day but i think that basically wraps up our plans for what we're going to be doing here in the wit sundays so with that until next time take care and keep smiling